Hi there and welcome to Mark That Talk Series. We're talking to Brussels-based artist Patrick Tresser, who develops theatrical installations with robotic agents as actors. Tresser installations use computational systems that aim to introduce artistic, expressive and obsessive aspects to robots' behaviours. These systems are influenced by research into humans' behaviour, more specifically how humans make marks, depict other humans, how we perceive artworks and relate to robots. Tressa also uses robots and autonomous computational systems to investigate the drawings and the painting practice. Enjoy the talk. Uh, but uh, yes, it's, uh, yes, I can, uh, see, I can see, see there's something drawing at the back. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I thought I'll do a bit of a small installation. Yeah. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How have you been How doing you been during, during this during lockdown? lockdown? Well, you know, I'm, I'm privileged. Yeah. I don't have to go to work. Uh, I move. Uh, my studio is just next door, but I still move to be totally confined, you know, to really follow, follow the thing. But I set up a small studio in, in my flat. So I'm very, you know, uh, it's a very privileged position to be in. That's good. And yeah. And what about you based now? Are you in Brussels? Sorry? Or what about are you based? I'm uh, in uh, Brussels, mm -hmm. and here, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's okay, I mean, I, I don't really, and you, where are you at the moment? Um, I'm, in London, I'm in London, so uh -huh. here is, a, it's a weird it's situation, a weird actually, situation because, because if you go outside, you go outside it, doesn't it doesn't look like, look there's, like a there's a pandemic going on. Going on. Because everyone, mm -hmm. seems, everyone to, seems to, you know, go out in the park and enjoy the nice enjoy weather. The nice weather. Uh, but um, then you mean it, you try and go shopping, shopping for, example, for example, it becomes a nightmare. Becomes a nightmare. Or, yeah. any, or any any normal, any normal um, commission, uh, commission that you would do, that you, would do you, know, you know, in your normal in day, normal life, day life, um, life, then, then that, becomes, that a becomes a problem. So, so it's a bit of a shock when you try and do things that were normal as a everyday actions. Mm. But, apart from, but that, apart from that, the skies are clear, the skies are clear um, um, and the air is still so fresh, fresh and nice, which is unusual, which is unusual for, London. for London. Yes, yeah, true. And there is less pollution, I guess. And less noise pollution. Because London mm -hmm. is very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, lived, like, I lived almost 30 years in London. Um, Patrick, um, there's Patrick, a little there's comment a little about, comment about, the, about audio. the audio. Um, they are saying that oh, you can still hear the echo. The echo. There's still an echo. Ah, okay. Um, so I don't know um, if you have a headset or let me think. or if you can maybe get closer to the mic. The mic. Uh, yeah, just a sec. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I'm going to try that. It's not sure that's going to work. But... Thank you, everyone, for your comments. <laughs> it's much appreciated because sometimes you don't realize. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone, I... for your comments. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to just come closer and just sound a bit down. Like that. Okay. Okay. Like that, it should be okay. Uh, yes, I'm just going to ask people watching. watching. Um, it doesn't really bother me, but I don't know if people watching yeah, yeah. can hear an echo or not. Can you hear us correctly now? Yeah, I can see yeah. you and hear yeah. well. No, I mean, people. Good. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, yes, I'm curious to know more about you as an artist and to understand, you know, where your practice was formed, because I know you have a background in computer science um, and also as an artist, as a painter. So I was curious to know how you got to combine the two. It's a long story. No, it's not a long story, but it's an old story. I mean, I, I, so I'm, I'm a bit... Um, so when I was a kid, I was always interested in science, in uh, art also. I did a lot of drawings, I, I did sculpture and things like that uh, from a young age. And uh, also I had a computer when I was very young. And at the time it was very unusual because it was in a... Uh, I had my first computer in 1976. So. So it was very primitive, only programmable in uh, assembly code. But as a kid, you know, you can learn things. So I, I, I learned computing like that. And I got interested and then I, uh, I did a baccalaureate in computing. 
where it was business computing, which was not at all what I wanted to do because I, was, I wanted already to work with images, with computer. Uh, so I studied and after I started, uh, so I did my baccalaureate for business computing. I did the beginning of a degree in computing, but I stopped that to move to London to escape and to become a painter. And after during 10 years, I tried to be a painter. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was not very good. I mean, it's very hard to do painting. I mean, see that it's tiring. It's, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, and after 10 years or 13 years, computers had evolved a lot. You know, the internet had appeared. It was possible to learn by yourself. And so I was stuck in my painting and I had the intuition that I could do something with computers. So then I started to, to to try to do something with computers. I looked at what the uh, other people did. So because there was the internet, it was possible to find out. So I found out uh, mainly about the algorithms because that was what interested me at the beginning. I mean, I've always, I'm a bit of a monomaniac. So I've always been interested in drawing and on spontaneous drawing. So from the beginning, when I started to use the computer, uh, for art, I tried to get them to draw. Um, the robotic came later. But... So it feels like drawing was your first uh, instinctive way of approaching um, IT and integrating technology into the artistic practice. Yes, it's um, so. The, there was one thing. I mean, there are different reasons why I moved to the computer and what I tried to do. But when I was a painter, because so I was a painter and I love doing portraits, I moved to different things. But uh, in drawing, uh, I was always very interested in doing something as spontaneous as possible. You know, really like gestural portrait, like very spontaneous. And the problem with that is that you can never achieve a full spontaneity because always at some point your brain comes in and break your spontaneity. Or for me, that was my problem. And also your knowledge of reality can contaminate your drawing. Uh, and so from the beginning, I had the, the intuition that with computers, because you have the control before the execution, you could be as spontaneous as possible. And then with the robots, when they do their drawings, can't be more spontaneous because they don't know anything about reality. They don't stop. They, don't stop. they just do. Um, so that, that, that was one of the many questions. And you don't know, I mean, the drawing is very important in my work and, uh, because all my installations produce drawings or marks, the neck marks. That's, mm -hmm. That's, very, That's interesting very interesting what you said what that, you said, um, um, sometimes, sometimes humans, humans tend, to tend to forget or artists or tend to forget, forget uh, the spontaneity yeah, and how and this how sort of prevents sort of you prevents from you breaking from the breaking rules the of what you've, of what learned, you've learned, you know, because there's a technique and so you would, so you would um, um, naturally, naturally um, sort, of sort of follow, follow that, path. that path. Whether, for example, Whether, for example a, child a child has more freedom, has more freedom uh, to create, to create um, perhaps. perhaps. Um, it doesn't um, have doesn't all these have models these already models embedded, embedded into the way it creates. Way it creates. So I was wondering, so I was you, know, wondering you know, I understand, I understand that, that the, 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 the need of creating a robot creating a drawing, drawing sort of combines sort of all of these, of these um, skills together. together. But how do you but see you now see that now you've been working with the robots, with the robots for a few robots years, few years um, still, um, still keeping that keeping freshness, freshness into the work, into the work. and spontaneity? Well, that's... Uh... That's an interesting question. For the robot, it's not a problem in a certain way. And uh, I mean, and for me, I'm, I'm it's a nice thing to, to do things with technology or with robots. And uh, in my work, I always try to have something childish about it. Or there is a, always a reference anyway to childhood. And I'm, I still have very good memories from my childhood. Uh, I mean, you know, before, like before 10 years old, when you can, you know, when there is this naivety and things. Um, and like I, I used old school desk and things like that, so it's always there. But there, there is this, this thing with, um, with uh, the robot because they don't know the reality, they don't have the, the problem. And after the, the freshness is really 
how people perceive the work and there is this thing of because they are robots there is something akin to puppetry and things like that and people react to robots in the same way and i can see this, well, my great pleasure is when i exhibit the installation to see the audience just like that and some of them look like kids you know like 80 years old kids just looking like that and it, it stops but there is this thing in the eye or this puzzle moment and, and, and still, uh, for me, it's different when I look at the robots, you know, I see the problems, I see the risk of failure, so it's like that. But, but, but there is that, but it's what is beautiful with robots, they are this kind of strange puppets, because you know that they're autonomous, or you think they're autonomous, and it's, it, it's very nothing. And I, I didn't know that uh, when I exhibited the first time, because at the beginning, it was only about drawing. So, for me, it was to make something capable of doing drawings, interesting drawings, to to to, to research further into the, the drawing practice. And then I exhibited the first robot. It was at Kinetica. And it was not working very well. Actually, for the private view, it was not working, so I didn't come. I was in my bed. And that's <laughs> but when was then that? I worked when on that. Right, hmm? In which year did you exhibit it for the first time? At Kinetica, the, the first time, so when it was not working, it, I mean, it did work in the end, but uh, in 2010. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So it's some time ago. Yeah. Uh, so I, I worked all night. I mean, I woke up very early in the morning, I worked and I managed to get it to work. And then it started to work and there was this queue of people who were waiting to be drawn and, and people were watching the process and the people were sitting there to be drawn and I realized that there was something amazing to explore, the, the fact how people perceive robots and their action. And as soon as you have something looking at you and making something in relation to the attention, people think that, they don't think that it's alive, but it creates this, this thing that's, yeah, it's very interesting. And I didn't expect that at all. So it really opened an area of exploration. Mm -hmm. So it feels Crazy. like that when you exhibit the work, it's more like a live performance. Yeah, it's always a live performance. I mean, and it's interactive. Yeah, I don't like the word interactive. Okay, how would you like to call because it? Because actually, I like humans to not do anything. Uh, right. Because so I have changed over the years. So my my kind of bestseller, I mean, the, the installation I exhibit the most is a human study number one. So it's one where you have multiple robots drawing one person who sits, and the person. So it used to be uh, forty minutes, at least. So I used to let the robot draw until the, they finish their drawing. So people would stay immobile for for forty minutes with multiple robots drawing them. So really so, posing, okay. with the audience watching, and so it is always a performance, and uh, all my installations are. Mm -hmm. um, there's a um, question there's here, a question I don't know, here. can you read the know. comments and questions on your screen? Um, I can't really see, no, my glasses are not really good for... Oh, okay, because <laughs> uh, it's in French, so I'm... I am... Oh, I, I assume the question right. Um, somebody's asking about the algorithm that you use. I suppose that's, yeah, I mean, the that's the question. Yeah, yeah. So the um, so so I continue the story of uh, learning the computer. So I, I the first few years that I decided to go towards the use of uh, computers, I started on my own. So I, I learned uh, uh, Python. It was one of the early version uh, of Python. I started to learn about um, computer vision, image processing, and um, this kind of thing, but I, I felt limited after two years. So I bought myself a plotter, I did some interesting experiments, a big pen plotter, like the algorithm we are using. And uh, so I was stuck, and then at this time, uh, at Goldsmith, the computing department, that was the first year when it was switching towards the use uh, of computing for the arts. So, um, uh, and now, I mean, now it's a very strong department in, in this thing. And I saw that and I thought, oh yeah, master, why not? I'm going to do a master. And I was already in my forties. So it was great, you know, at the time it was cheap to do a master studies yeah. in London. It's not the same anymore. You might go back to that. But, um, and so, and I started to work with a professor Lemarie. So in the course we were five the first year. So it was quite special. 
So I did the thing part time. So we worked with uh, Frederick Lemary, uh, the professor. Uh, so I did the master, and already I was working on the simulation of rolling, but totally on a simulation without the embodiment, just on screen. Yeah. Uh, and I, I did that, I got good results, and uh, you know, got into some exhibitions. And then I did a PhD, started a PhD that I never finished. But for this PhD, we, we got a, a nice funding from the Labour on Trust. And that really enabled me to then look into robotics and things like that. So to go back to the question of the algorithms, mm -hmm. uh, all that was developed based on my research uh, on the PhD. Uh, because what was good uh, being, uh, it was not a master of art, it was a master of science. Indeed. So I learned really a, a rigorous approach to, to, to research, uh, like to write papers and things like that. So I published a few papers about my work. You can find them online. The best one is the last one, because I don't really like the other ones, where it's more about the ideas more than the, the reality, the, the, the algorithms. Um, so yeah, all that is based on that. It's possible to find the, everything in the research paper. Uh, I write most of my code. I use low-level uh, libraries. But generally, I like to have control on things. So I spend a lot of time programming. So I am limited by that. I understand. We actually had a few questions coming through. Um, um, so you have mentioned about the algorithm, but uh, there's a friend, ask, uh, a friend artist asking, um, how does the robot R algorithm work? Which you sort of explained already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so... So the so one of the things that I try to do uh, that I want the robots to do is to produce drawings, so live drawing from observation, because that's always what uh, interested me. And so for the drawings to act on the perceptual system of the human in the same way as a handmade drawing works, but without being a pastiche, so without the drawing being forced. Uh, you know, I want the, the drawing to be natural to the robot. So no, it's not a printer. So the, so, the, so the drawing is really the result of the characteristic of the robots, of the program, and so on and so forth. And so the, in a certain way, the style is emergent and is strongly um, influenced by the embodiment. The fact that it's a robot with a robotic arm that has some flexibility and things like that. Um, so the, after the way it works, so the, that's first a, a reaction to salient lines on the face. So it reacts to strong lines in specific direction. It does that, the lines. And after for the shading, it does some scribbles. And there, there is some feedback, uh, and it compares what it's doing to a certain aim of the negative. And then at the end, it's signed. So that's a summary of the, mm -hmm. more complicated. And they're also asking, why did you choose this particular robot hand over others? Um, because they are, uh, so I'm going to do some advertising. I'm not paid by a uh, robotist. So I use a robotist motor. They are smart servos. I think there are other companies uh, making them. But for 10 years, I've been using them. And they last uh, very long because when I do exhibition, often the robots work uh, eight hours a day during three months. So, so they have to be so fairly reliable. So that's one of the problem of exhibiting this kind of work is to have something that, uh, that, that works all the time. Uh, so I use those motors because each one has got a microcontroller inside. So you, you, you can get feedback on the position, on the velocity, on the force applied and things like that. They are, they are very good and they have different level of, uh, of quality and uh, different characteristics. Of and they go between 30 euros and you know, 500 euros. There's a big uh, mm -hmm. range. Um, and uh, otherwise I designed, so, so the arm you can see, the arm, so I, in a certain way, I decided to have it like that. So I, I kept the same architecture and the same morphology as now. An and I tried to give the same proportion. And um, 
So it's like that. And after the, the parts are by them from the company in the States, uh, who are very good. Um, and I've been using exactly the same arm since the beginning. And at the moment, I think I have 40 robots or something like that, so I can make big installation. But they are all based on the same uh, template. I'm just starting now, I mean, a couple of years ago, to use better motors. So like that, for museums, it's better because in some museums, they can't touch artworks because it just, they're not used to the idea of touching an artwork. You don't touch a painting, you don't touch a Yeah, so that's true, artwork. actually. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very strange because, so, yeah, anyway. Um, but it's understandable, I mean, it's normal. Um, so, yes, um, in terms of hardware, that's what I use. And after, I use always the same, uh, the same, uh, no, no, I use um, old Lenovo laptops, so they're all recycled laptops. Because the same thing, I've got 30 robots, so I've got 30 laptops. So it's good to have recycled one. Yeah. And they are long lasting and, because I don't really like uh, the computational ways of processing power and things. Yeah, absolutely. It's certainly, absolutely something, certainly to something to be mindful of. Be mindful of. Um, there's a, there's also a very interesting question about the art and the question is, do you think this art is more similar to drawing, photograph or live performance? But so, they, so in my work, there are two different avenues. Uh, they, there is a research into drawing, so it is drawing, because it, it works in the same way on, on the brain. So it, the advantage with robots is that they exist in the same reality as us, in the same physical reality and in the same time scale, which is not the case with the computer programs in the same way. I mean, not in the same way. And the drawing is really the history of the pen going on the paper, the history of the action of the painter on paper. So because it's made by a robot, it's a real drawing that is perceived by the drawing. There, there is this um, philosopher in Paris called Pignocchi who wrote that so in the drawing you can recover the intention of the artist. Yeah. Uh, but, but there is that, so it works as a drawing and, and, and like each time I exhibit an installation, I retune the, the robot until I'm satisfied with the drawing. So obviously it's, it's different from one place to another. So for me, it's, I, even if I use the robot, I, I'm still a drawing practitioner. Mm -hmm. And after, there is also the, the theatrical aspect, the, the performative aspect, and there it's, it's between theater and puppetry. And but it's the strange theater was there are no stories. It's more some kind of recurrent loops or something like that. But it's very important because I mean not so much with the portraits, but I do the still lives, so the vanitas, or the classroom that I did with strange. If you look at the website, you will see different things where I really play more with ideas and, and things, and really use it as a means to express different things. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are the two avenues. Uh, uh, since, you've since you've been, been uh, collaborating, uh, with, collaborating with robots, robots. Um, have, have you also, also been also drawing, drawing or painting? Or painting? Uh, I mean, uh, like hand like painting, painting or hand drawing? Hand drawing? Or how is that going? How, is that going? how do you no, actually... No, I mean, not really. I, I actually done painting with a, I actually done painting with a big robot in, uh, in Germany a few years ago. Uh, must be a few years ago. Uh, I do drawings, like recently, uh, I... Because I, I, I do sometimes drawing to remember what I'm doing and to get inspiration in a certain way. And recently I've started to do faces because here I thought, oh, I should post something. So in my new desk, I thought, oh, I'm going to, oh, and I thought, oh, I can still do this. And I thought, oh, I'm going to learn again. I mean, train again. Because, you know, it's like anything you need to train a bit. But yeah, it's a pleasure anyway, drawing. But I don't, the thing is that, you know, programming or robotics uh, takes a long time, especially robots, because the same thing, uh, the problem with robots is when you do a test, it takes the time of the test. Mm -hmm. If I do a test with a drawing that takes 30 minutes, it takes 30 minutes. It's not like on a computer where you can have 300 drawings in the tenth of a second. You need to wait. So, so everything is very time consuming. So the time for painting or drawing. And th there is something also with painting by hand that it's very uh, painful <laughs> psychologically. 
No, because there is a thing that you can always do better. Mm -hmm. You can, you are fully responsible when you do a painting of what it is. When with the robots, I kind of, I'm not that responsible of what they're doing. So, you know, I start there and, they start, and after what they do, they do. You know, so, but I don't, there is not this, um, yeah, this, this pain of the painting. Mm -hmm. There's another, There's another uh, more technical question. Technical question. Um, so, um, so, are they are dynamic they motors, motors by robotics? By robotics? Yeah, 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 they are dy dynamic cell uh, motors. So I use uh, for a long time the AX12, so, and they last very long and can even change uh, the, the gears inside. So they, and they, they are very good. But yeah, I only use the dynamic cell motors. And I have very good relationship with the propane injection. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I actually have a question myself now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I was curious to know because I saw you know in your in, in your website and Instagram I saw that you did a lot of portraits, but I was curious because I can see now at the back if you maybe can show us a close up of what the robot is drawing. Is it a pair of shoes? Yeah, yeah, he's drawing a pair of shoes. I've done a series of shoes. Uh, there are. Uh, so I, I was curious to know uh, about the the subjects that you. Oh, okay. <laughs> from last year, last, no, I got them when I was in Hong Kong uh, for a project last year, and that was what I had in Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> no, I, I did a series of shoes because for me the, the the passing of time in my work is very important at a lot of different levels. And with shoes, I like keeping shoes for a long time. I like very old leather shoes. You know, like, it will take, but you can get them for seven and eight years. And you know, they, they get this history. And so I've done a series, you can see them on Instagram, I think, of the whole shoe. Because there is this thing of, they are possessed in you know, some of the shoes. Really, it's um, very Van Gogh-like Gogh shoes, -like shoes, someone is saying. No, no, but I mean, it comes from there. You know, it's, you know, it comes from there. I mean, the, I, I remember, you know, I've always remembered the Van Gogh shoes. Mm -hmm. It's such a strong thing, because the person is in the shoes. Um, but yeah, but the portraits, I've got uh, more than 36,000 uh, portraits. And, uh, so and I, I have to do another project with this uh, collection. Because mm -hmm. the thing is that when I exhibit in, uh, in museums, in public places and things like that, the installation, so often the, the museum version, there are five robots drawing one person. For smaller exhibition, it's three robots. And, uh, and I, I'm sorry, but I never give the drawings away. So they're always kept and they come, they're part of this big artwork called collection, title collections. And, and the, it's 36,000, so it's, it's, it's a nightmare actually, because I have to do something with, it's very difficult to manage 36,000 uh, drawings, especially that I didn't scan them as I, as I go. And because I have more and more installations, I have more and more drawings coming back. Because um, like last year, I had, I think, I, had, I was part of 16 shows during the year. So I get all those drawings back. So I have a project now. I have written a project to do with this collection. But it's, it, it is not simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I can imagine that. Logistics <laughs> and uh, finding Creating archives. Yeah, 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 because I need to do that anyway. It's, mm -hmm. uh, but it's beautiful also to imagine that there are all those people who have spent the time you know, in front of the robot. And also, I kind of owe them to do something with the bridge mm -hmm. because, uh, because they've given their time and things and have kept the drawings. So there is this thing, I mean, there is the experience. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, so we, we have more questions for you. Um, so, so someone is saying, I think you're using a pen. Have you tried different mediums like paint? Paint, yeah, yeah, yeah. So paint, I worked, uh, so I collaborated with a, a university in Germany, in Constance, um, with a Professor Doyson. So he invited me and got me a nice, uh, I was a senior fellow, which was, <laughs> I love the titles like that. And uh, I stayed a year in Constant, which is a beautiful place with a big light. And the university is amazing. And also, 
in Germany, people take education seriously. It's, it's really a pleasure. I mean, it's, you know, it's education. And um, so I was there, and they have a big uh, robot that is designed, and they've, that they've, uh, they've made special tools so you can handle brushes and clean them and so on. And they did also the, the, the software uh, architecture for it to be easy to use. So I spent, and so I did a series of work and the same thing. It can be seen on my, um, on my website. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I've kept the, the bio. Uh, uh, I always use the bio, I mean the robots always use the bio to draw just because it's it's just reliable. So as I say, one of the big problems with this kind of installation is to get something that works all mm -hmm. the time. You know, it's really, and the bio just can work all day, it doesn't stop. When a lot of the paints they just don't they, they don't last a day because they get uh, dirty or whatever. I started to use for the for the still life some uh, Japanese pen, the Sakura, but then it's complicated. Also, they only last one day, and they're not that cheap when you import them. So it's, uh, and but they have beautiful colors. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I don't know if you have a chance to show us the robot closer with your camera. Uh, yeah, sure. And I was, uh, I was also interested to understand how the process works in terms of, um, uh, is there a camera, right? Uh, come on, oh, I can do that. Does it work if I turn the camera? Um, you can try and turn yeah, the camera. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so those are the shoes. Beautiful. So there is a camera here. Okay. Yeah. okay. The camera that is looking at the paper. I mean, I, I, when it's like that, it's a performance thing, so it's not taking feedback from the camera. That's just to make it look more alive. It's puppetry. Okay. Otherwise, those are the motors. So here, those are not the cheapest motors. It's the range above. So those last for, for a very long time. So that's what it is, and it's on an old school desk. Mm -hmm. And why and do you use, you use such a, a setting, you know, setting, you know, on a school desk? Well, it's, it's that, it's a childhood memories, and it's, it's also, it's very convenient, yeah, <laughs> also, there's always uh, something very practical. I uh, heard in one of your previous um, interviews that, um, and I was curious to hear more about this concept, that you could possibly recreate clones of things and people in a possible future because you've sort of captured the face and the data of people that have been modeling for the robot. How does that work? Do you envision that in a possible future or not? Which one? The, oh, yes, yeah, the cloning thing. Is that what you were talking about? Yes. But the well made thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't believe in those. No, it's it's a philosophical thing. Mm -hmm. No, no, but it's 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 true that there, there is a thing. It's, and I don't know how far I went on the interviews that you saw, but I can go quite far on this one. Um, <laughs> I quite like no, no, the topic it, because because it was uh, when Welbeck came up with his book. Uh, I can't remember the title, at all, but but cloning. Yeah. Yes. And I, and I was thinking, well, yeah, the problem with cloning is that. You don't keep your skills. You don't keep the best of yourself. You know, if you clone yourself, so you have to re-educate your clone, right? and you lose all that. And you have the risk when it's true that if you take a robot and you take the best of yourself and you put it in it, then you know it becomes this kind of pure thing, you know, sinless thing. And you can which is which is not true at all because robots are fragile. You know, they need batteries and. You know, they, they last far longer than a human being, you know, but, yes, uh, even the industrial robot. You know, it was a kind of idea. But, and, that, and, uh, and actually, recently I've worked and I've been in contact with people from the singularity uh, side of the of thing. And personally, I, I, I think those are philosophical ideas. It's sure that perhaps at some point it will be possible to do Something like that, who knows, you know, with technology. But the problem is that you can see how the world is, it will be like more inequalities if we achieve those kind of things, you know, it will be just, you know, the inequalities will go bigger and bigger. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I totally, nice totally, totally, totally understand your views on that. Um, there's more um, question for you. Question. Um, um, have you tried try, um, um, one robot one to draw, robot draw the other's robot, yeah, drawing? robot drawing? Did you try Did one you robot try to one draw one other robots, robots other drawing? Robots drawing? Uh, sometimes what I do, so sometimes uh, with the installations, um, with a portrait with a human study number one, so there's no model, there's no sitter. So what I do, I take a drawing of a sitter and I spin it to the chair and I start the robot and they look at the drawing and they start to draw the drawing. And how does it come out? Is it like a, an identical copy of the drawing you already have? Or does it add some creativity to it? Creativity? In, t- in terms of creative traits, you know, different traits. No, no, it's different. Trait. It is different, different because it goes against with the perceptual system. Because the robots are, are, are implemented or are, are a program is, is the other behavior. So it is really that. They react to what you see by doing gesture and follow certain strategy. So, so, they, so obviously, if it goes through another cycle, it's different. And at some point, they can't recognize the face anymore, so they don't draw anymore. If you, if you do it three times, I think if you do it three times in general, it's done. I see. So you will never have an identical identical drawing and then after a few times you will lose those those traits. Yeah, yeah, it becomes different. uh, That's interesting. interesting. Um, Um, So we have a more light question. question. (laughs) What's your favorite movie about robots robots or sci-fi? The what? What is your favorite favorite, uh, movie, uh, movie, film film about about robots robots or sci-fi? I, I have problems having favorites. Maybe some. I like lots of things. <laughs> but like I don't have a favorite drink or a favorite food. I, I like lots of things. Uh, and films. I like Terminator. That's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, no, no, I like uh, Terminator. I don't know. Uh, oh, no, there was. Um, I can't remember now the title. The one, uh, the one with Robbie Williams, uh, based on uh, Isaac. Uh, uh, I can't remember the title. Uh, Centennial No Man or something like that. It's uh, based on the short story by Asimov. And it's not a very famous, it's not the most famous uh, movie with Robert. Mm-hmm. Something near a man, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. anyway. That's, uh... <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, and um, I wanted to I ask you about, about your about recent your projects. projects. What are you currently what working, you currently on? working on? Well, that's an interesting question. No, I mean, so, so one of the, of course, we are in this situation, this dramatic uh, situation, and for, like for a lot of artists, I mean, I've been blessed. The past 10 years, I've been blessed. I've worked non-stop. Uh, and this year was going to be the most, uh, already in February, my year was full. My schedule was full. It was amazing. And obviously, now everything has stopped and everything is canceled. Did you have exhibitions uh, planned? And... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, my year was almost full. Uh, so now everything either postponed. I still have one in Hong Kong that might still happen in, uh, in November. But otherwise, everything is postponed and nobody knows anyway what's going to happen. So mm-hmm. the thing is that, in the past few years, it has been like that. So I, I have very little time in the studio to do new work or to do new uh, to do research. And so now I'm, I have this time to do research. Of course, there is a problem of not knowing what the future is going to be. But at least now we don't do anything else. We don't have, so, so at least I can do research and working on different things. So, so the thing is, I, um, I, uh, so the past 10 years, I've done uh, seven series of installation. So all titled Human Study, so Human Study number one. Number one. And, and they're all based on the same architecture in terms of software. That's what I developed at the beginning. Uh, so now I want to stop this series of Human Study 
And uh, so now I, uh, I spent the first months, you know, the first couple of weeks of uh, rewriting all the software. So now it's really stable and clean. And I've upgraded to Python 3 and to a new uh, Linux and what I was using. So I was doing, and now it's easy to maintain, blah, blah, blah. So all of that's done. So now I'm doing research on the next, uh, on the next thing. And I'm, I just have directions. So I'm more, as much as uh, the robots I was using, their expressivity and all that was a bit subhuman or fragile or clumsy or, you know, it was, yeah, not subhuman, yeah, it's, uh, or too human in the stem way. So it's what people would say that was very human. Now the, the next thing I'm looking at is to the things that are, I, I don't like the, the term superhuman, but it is the term, but, to do things that are now detached from humanity, where humanity is a remote memory in a certain way. And as much as uh, the, my robots were a bit fragile, a bit clumsy, I want robots that are doing movements that are a bit like dance and things like that. But, and also I'm, I'm working on new arm that I've designed, that I'm, I'm, so I've learned um, a CAD so software to, to design the parts and things, very different areas. And also use more machine learning, the thing where I still haven't, uh, with machine learning, the like three years that I've been experimenting with it and learning, and I haven't found yet. Uh, I mean, I have found a lot of things, but not something that I can integrate in my uh, artistic practice, mm -hmm. which is a bit strange. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's actually, uh, there's a, actually question, a question, and somebody is asking somebody if you ever, ever uh, used uh, GAN technology, technology um, in, uh, your work. in your work. GAN? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 actually, it's not true. Uh, if you look online, there is a pix to pix experiment that I've done that was quite nice. It is an experiment uh, where I trained a pix to pix system with some of my robot drawings and some simulated. And then after I play with the system live to recreate faces. So there we, you can find that online. I don't think it's on my website. Uh, there, anyway. And about guns, yeah, it's very interesting, but uh, I, I really, uh, the problem is uh, with all this machine learning thing, including guns. I like things that are surprising. And with GANs, you don't have the surprise. Yeah, you have the surprise because sometimes the combination of the things are good. But in terms of visual, the, you can't have the shock of the new, of the, you know, of the, oh, it's, it's right here. I mean, so some people do amazing work with, with GANs. And also, I mean, it has been researched a lot. And also GANs, I find them, I find the result, um, a peu mou. You know, there's slots, there's always uh, those curves and, and uh, no, no, and uh, also the, there's a problem with robotics, so you could use GANs in, in part of the perceptual system, but the way machine learning for robotics hasn't really done that much so far. Uh, even for motor control, there are things like if you see Boston uh, Dynamics that don't really use that much machine learning. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, control thing. Mm -hmm. So I said my thing about guns. And, um, and um, we have a we question have a about question who's about your favorite who's artist favorite and artist who's inspired you. Sorry, I can't be answering. Which artist Which inspired, you? inspired you? Um, well, uh, in paintings, a uh, lot of artists from, uh, you know, from Velasquez, Da Vinci, Odilon Rodon, um, Titian also, I quite like. Oh, um, Ingres, I will imagine, in classic. After going up, of course, to Picasso for the, for the shock in some way. The fact that you look at a painting and you don't know how it's holding together, you know, the really mm. thing. And after, in the same style, in a certain way, for the same visual surprise and shock that Francis Bacon, and then um, Basquiat. Basquiat also has the thing. You look at the painting and you don't know how it's solving, but it's solving like, perfectly. It's, it, it's great. And I like that, you know, this, this surprise. And after people like Michaud and things like that. And, uh, in contemporary art, um, 
Yeah, of course, people like Anselm Kiefer and uh, Richter in painting and other people are in conceptual like Messonnier. You know. um, and then uh, in um, computer uh, digital art, uh, a great admiration for the pioneers. So I know, uh, so I met, of course, Harold Cohen, Fruden and, and uh, more importantly, from the beginning when I was interested, it's uh, Roman Verotsko. Roman Verotsko is really uh, a big inspiration, even if my work is totally different. And I met him and I visited the studio and he's an amazing person, beautiful person. And his work is, uh, when I, I, it was part of the first thing I looked at when I started to use computers. And that's really a strong inspiration for me. Uh, for my um, um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm mindful about mindful the time. About We've got about 10 minutes and I, and I oh, want okay. everyone to know everyone where to know find, where your, find art your art and see and more. See but more. we do we have a few more comments and questions. questions. Um, um, so someone so is saying, someone I think your work is better, better than pure better digital Gantz work uh, because it's uh, physical, because it's physical. Uh, which is a nice comment. Nice and then comment. if and then you then take a feedback from, from the drawing from itself, itself, like human like artist, artist looks at his drawings, drawing while drawing. While drawing. So mm -hmm. this is more about the feedback, yeah, I yeah. suppose. No, I mean, I do. Uh, so the problem is, uh, again, the same thing. During exhibitions, you want things that work and things that are interesting to watch. So at the moment, well, so it has stopped, you see that uh, The camera, when it draws, the camera follows the pen. So it just like that, it looks more alive. So it doesn't take the feedback from the camera because it would be too difficult to calibrate. It would be open to too many problems. And also, if it was just taking the feedback, it would not be as interesting to watch because it would just go down, take a picture. So the, but it uses feedback because in memory, it has a model of the drawing it process and it uses that for feedback. Uh, but in studio, I use real feedback from the camera and it does give different results. But it is quite interesting. And, uh, yeah, it, it actually, using feedback totally simplifies the software uh, in robotics in general. I mean, in, at all level of robotics. Feedback is used all the time, so using it for visual things. And do you think technology can be wrong, and from what and and from its mistakes can arise quality? Oh, like I, I, like from human mistakes also. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean the thing is that uh, the thing is that. Uh, uh, the problem for a robot is to evaluate what is wrong, uh, right and wrong. And in, computer, in computing or in machine learning, an error is something very precise and very determined. I mean, and it is a basic thing of learning, actually, the machine learning is diminution of the error. Yeah, that's how it works. So, yeah, after the thing is, it's even with uh, the most you know, the GANs and other uh, software, it's, it's not at all comparable to what human beings do. So the analogies are good. And uh, as artists, we can, we can play with that. But as long as we say that it's art in a certain way, that, you know, play with ideas or use words for other things. Like, uh, and I think it's actually, that's a problem with uh, one of the problems with my work that I've noticed is that people think that it's real in the museum. So it's difficult for them to see it as an artwork. You know, you go to see a play, you see a play, well, no problem. So you, you are in it, you think that it's real. Yeah? But you come out of it, you know that what you've seen is an artwork. And the problem is that with technology, people you know, believe in it, believe that it's true. And there is not this some time, and not all the time, of course, now people can look at technology as artworks, but there is this thing of the... Uh, and it's interesting, I think I noticed that the movie, I don't think it's a problem. Just, just yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think it's a notion that we have as a concept of going into a museum and not being able to touch or interact or be part of that work. 
Mm. I think with, I think um, with uh, contemporary, contemporary art, you know, there's a, there's a meaning, the performance of the work. So I think um, the audience has um, become more familiar with entering a space that is either into a museum or a gallery and becoming themselves part of the work. But it's only like recently, I suppose, in contemporary art that this has been happening. Um, and there is always a question and doubt whether you're allowed to or you can or not. So, But it's also a problem for the museums, psychologically, and also logistically, because I know that with my installation, it stops people. Uh, because it's not uncommon for people to stay 15, 20 minutes looking at the process, even when it's not a portrait, when it's a, a still life. I and mean, for, for the portrait, it's even worse. Because I try to make the, 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 the process of the drawing appearing on paper interesting. So, um, and uh, logistically, for a museum, having people stopping for that long in one place is not good, actually. People need to to move around. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, and it's very interesting because you don't think about that, but uh, those things. I mean, it's true that people, but people get used. I mean, I know that with the portrait, people are easily used to sit and uh, to participate. And stuff like. It's mm -hmm. always fully booked, actually. That's right. wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. Okay, there's okay, one, one, one more question. Uh, uh, what were your biggest challenges, were challenges in creating your work? Creating getting things that work. <laughs> no, I mean, it is a reliability. Mm -hmm. I mean, because after the research and the pain and the, you know, the research that's interesting, the difficulty, you know, it's computing. And, and do you think that is more worth. the software or the hardware in terms of reliability? Uh, no, no, hardware, hardware. I mean, it's just, you know, that things are going to fail. That's all, because they are in movement. So at some point, they will fail. So mm -hmm. the thing is to mitigate the, the thing. But otherwise, it, those are not problems, actually. I mean, it's, it's engineering in Houston where it's learning to mm -hmm. <laughs> with failure. Yeah. Uh, no, but otherwise, the challenge is with the work. Yeah, I mean, programming is time consuming, uh, but it's problem. So, I mean, it's interesting. It's exploration, it's adventure. Fantastic. So far, I've been blessed, but I know that in the next few years, since, well, actually, in the next few months, things can dramatically change. Mm. And where can we where can see we your see work your and work keep up to date with, with what you're doing? Well, there's, a, so there's my website, which I don't update very often. There's Facebook group, there's Instagram. But, um, so those things, which, that's the thing, because we don't know the future at all, as I say, so the next almost sure exhibition is in uh, Hong Kong, uh, where I'm showing uh, the installation Human Study Number One. It's actually going to be a beautiful uh, setup. It's in a performing space in a kind of theater. Um, it was supposed to be at the same time as uh, Art Basel. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, Art Basel. It's been postponed. Yeah. Things happened <laughs> in the world. Uh, what else do I have for sure? No, I have a small uh, show in Spain, I can't remember, in Zaragoza, in uh, November, and after the other ones, most of them are postponed indefinitely. There's one in France that has been moved to January, but the same thing. You can't, nobody knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the problem with my work is it's designed to be live. So. Mm -hmm and to add an audience. And it's not really true because the drawings uh, exist as a, a thing, but you have all the installations, uh, and there are installations that have to be seen and live. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't know where you can see my work. No, you can come to Brussels when there's no more confinement. I've got a big studio that I might be able to, st to keep for a few months if things don't go too badly. But no, no, I mean, if people visit uh, Brussels, and they are interested in my work. I always have a few installations uh, running, ready to run. And I always have an installation ready to, to do portraits and things. So you're, you're welcome to contact me. I'll definitely make I'll sure definitely to make sure visit you next, next time I'm in Brussels. I don't know when, I don't know but when. I <laughs> <laughs> soon enough. Soon enough. <laughs> 
it's been great it's talking been great. to you and learning so much about your work so about and, your uh, and understanding uh, how it actually how works, this collaboration between you, um, between you um, the um, software, and, software the and the hardware, and the beautiful and drawings beautiful that, you drawings that you create. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much, you everyone, much. for asking, for asking questions, questions and interacting with us. Um, uh, if you want to keep up to date, please check out um, um, Tressa's Instagram, uh, Instagram account and, uh, also, the and uh, also the website. And, and if there's any news there's about any your news upcoming about shows, your upcoming shows um, please do let us know um, and we'll share it. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been a Take pleasure. Care. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Yes. Take care. Bye.